I'm so happy to be here and I'm happy all of you are there. It's wonderful. So many good people. I'm really enjoying seeing all your faces. I wanted to talk about Dreikers' influence on individual psychology. And thanks to Uti, she suggested I give a background on the history of the International Summer School. I hope that's okay with all of you. I want you to know that Adler and Dreikers met each other after World War I. They were both officers in the Austrian army and they were forced to go. They didn't want to be in the war and they didn't see war as a solution to human problems. It turns out that Dreikers was in the trenches and got shot and wounded, so he had to get discharged from the war early, and that's when he went to medical school. And after that, he developed his contact with Adler, and that was the beginning of his work as we know it now. So both of them were army officers, and they both didn't want war. And when they were both psychiatrists, Dreikers had a case of a patient that he needed help with. So he went to see Adler and got information from Adler. He was the senior man and Dreikers was the junior man. The point was that Dreikers was never a student of Adler, but just a younger colleague. And they found they had so many common interests and common beliefs. And Dreikers recognized that Adler had a very positive school of psychology which he could practice, and he joined Adler in their community projects. He helped lead the community child guidance centers, which were serving the families and the schools in Vienna. They had a strong commitment to the community, and both worked together in the child guidance centers. They respected each other. Rikers wrote, a book, which was the introduction to Adlerian psychology called Fundamentals of Adlerian Psychology. It was the only book which Adler endorsed and wrote an introduction. So if you look at the original book before reprinting, you see Adler wrote an introduction And Adler had moved to the United States before Dreikers did. And both moved because they could see the fascists gaining ground in Austria. So Adler died in 1937. And he had contracted to give lectures in Brazil. But Unfortunately, Adler died, and the Viennese Adlerians had decided that the one to go to Brazil and give the lecture would be Dreikers, because Dreikers was already planning to go to the United States in the Western Hemisphere. So he went to Rio de Janeiro and gave lectures which Adler was going to do. And that was the beginning of the Adlerian movement in Rio de Janeiro. And after a few years, Dreikers went back to Rio. But before that, he moved to Chicago. There was a little group in Chicago that needed his help. So he built the Adlerian movement in Chicago. In Los Angeles, there was a lady named Lydia Sicher with whom Dreikers had worked and Adler had worked in their community centers in Vienna. 
and drinkers was fond of Sicher and they respected each other's work. And the two of them cooperated as much as they could long distance. And both developed colleagues with whom they were working in each city. What happened was that Sicher and Drikers became allies and the New York group had its own ideas, which were not always in favor of what Drikers and Sicher had decided was what Alfred Adler wanted. But Drikers worked together with Danica Deutsch in New York City, and he worked with Kurt Adler, and they both supported what Drikers wanted to do in spreading the teachings of Adler. Danica has had a husband named Leonard Deutsch, and he was a musician who developed an Adlerian way of teaching piano. And I was lucky enough for a few weeks to be his student. The trouble is I never became a pianist and it's not Leonard's fault, it's mine. But it was wonderful to learn from him. And I got to know Danica at that time after I graduated high school. And in Chicago, Drikers continued the child guidance centers, which were so important in the view of both Adler and Drikers. The work they had done in Vienna was to emphasize community feeling or social interest, which is known in German as Gemeinschaftsgefühl. And Drikers wanted that to be an important part of Adlerian work. Parenting is a part of the community because the beliefs are shared by the community and the whole community needed to follow those beliefs. If the bigger community would follow them, it would be much easier for the parents also to educate their children with Adlerian ideas. So it would help the community and it would help the individual family Drikers set up the child guidance centers based on the work that he and Adler had done in Vienna. He established the Alfred Adler Institute on Michigan Avenue and he trained young professionals who, who could join the Institute and his private practice. He was a pioneer because he took in non-medical people into his private practice. He was the first one to invite a PhD psychologist to join his practice, and that was Harold Mozak. He also had Adeline Starr, who was an expert in psychodrama, and she offered services to his private patients. And then later she became a valued member of the Institute, the Alfred Adler Institute in Chicago. And she joined the faculty of the International Summer School. And Dreikers formed the International Summer School in the way that Adler would have wanted. So he already had a broad base and he followed the work that Adler had wanted to do. While, Ad, while Dreikers was setting up all of this work in Chicago, he also went international. 
while developing his outreach in USA and Canada, strikes us strengthened that Larian work in other countries. He had gone to Europe after World War II, and he went to Israel, where there was a lady who had been his colleague in Vienna, and she wanted to develop an Adler Institute in Tel Aviv, so Dreikers helped her. And that's when he met Achi and Mika Katz and Judith Alo and Hava Kirshna. And Achi became a very close ally of Dreikers. And after Dreikers' death, Achi became a co person in the new organization, which was called ICASI, the International Committee for Adlair and Summer Schools and Institutes. Achi, Mika, Judith, and Hava were teachers in the early summer schools that Dreikers established from 1962 on. And the reason Dreikers wanted to build up international outreach was because Adler himself had done that while he was alive. But the Nazis demolished all the Adlerian work and killed a lot of the Adlerian people, except for the ones who emigrated. So Dreikers wanted to reestablish Adlerian psychology all around the world again. And in Israel, he worked with all these people that I mentioned. And in Germany, he worked with Eric Blumenthal. And Eric was a leader in the Baha'i religion and had come in many countries. And the Baha'i religion also wanted to bring peace among people. So he, he felt the Adlerian ideas were good. And he and Dreikers became close friends and Dreikers worked in Greece, and there was a lady named Juliet Cavadas who wanted to establish an Adlerian movement in Greece. And he worked with her and with others in Greece and in the United Kingdom and other European nations. His summer school had leaders of people whom he had trained. And he had trained Ari, and he had trained Bill and Mim Pew from the USA, and Edna Nash from Canada, and Brunya Grunwald, who was also married to Dreikers' cousin, Achim Grunwald. So Brunya was both a relative and a student and a leader in the Adlerian movement. And Adeline Starr, was also part of this group that helped in the early summer schools. It was an attempt by Dreikers to bring in as many countries as possible and as many areas of teaching as possible. So psychodrama and art therapy were part of the summer school, which made it unusual. It wasn't just psychology. In 1943, he married Sadie Garland, who had been a social worker and had worked with Jane Addams. So she understood what Dreikers was trying to do in reaching the community. So Sadie became his partner in the summer school and she developed a new Adlerian approach to art therapy. And those of you, who have taken an art therapy class with Uti know that she developed an approach which Utli followed and many Adlerian art therapists around the world follow it because it integrated group of activities, which was so important. It was like group counseling, 
only it was art therapy. And Sadie Garland developed that in a psychiatric floor in a hospital. So she knew what she was doing and using it as a therapeutic procedure. Dreikers encouraged all these group activities because he said, when you work in a group, you don't just influence one person, you influence many and they influence each other. So it becomes easier for everybody to cooperate and to become a corroborator and a collaborator, which was so important for Adlerian psychology. Dreikers taught in universities all over North America. And that's how he met Ray Lowe at the University of Oregon. And he met Ray students who were also influential. One of them was Oscar Christensen. So from all these outreach activities, Dreikers was able to train many people and the early faculty in the summer school were the people he had trained independently of the summer school. The summer school grew and became popular. The summer school were very important because Dreikers was not afraid to challenge autocrats. One of his early approaches was to work in Greece when there was an autocratic dictator and people said, it's too dangerous. He shouldn't go there. But Dreikers made friends with a priest who supported him. The summer schools were a way that Dreikers was able to reach people around the world. And it continued what he had done before the summer school and continued after the formation of the summer school. It was named the Rudolf Dreiker Summer School after he died. Until his death, there was no name for it. But one summer, the name Ikasi was given to the organization. And it was a shortcut term which people used for the summer school. But the name Ikasi is not the name of the summer school. It's the name of the organization. Ikasi was going to offer another summer school one year. Ahri believed that a school for parents was needed at an international level. So we printed flyers and announcement for school for parents. Unfortunately, it didn't work. And the only summer school that was offered by Ikasi consistently was the Rudolf Dreikers Summer School. And it's the summer school that he himself had developed with leaders he developed. Sadie Dreikers appointed three chairpersons to represent three different geographic areas. After Dreikers died, so Ahri, Eric, and Bill Pugh were the first three chairpersons. 
they had all worked closely with Drikers. And they knew what Drikers wanted. And they carried out his wishes. After Bill Pugh died, I, Eva, became chairperson because by that time, I had already attended one of the summer schools and I knew what it was about and what Eric and Aki and Bill were striving for to continue, to continue the work of Drikers. Unfortunately, Eric and Aki were sick and then Eric died and Helmut Hoyschen replaced him and then Jenny Clifford replaced Aki after he died. And then that way we kept the structure of three chairpersons from different countries or parts of the world. And the current three chairpersons are Uti and Teo and myself. And Uti and Teo live fairly close together, but they still have independent ideas. And it works having three chairpersons who work together cooperatively to do what Drikers wanted to achieve with the Rudolf Dreikers Summer School. The first summer school was when Dreikers was hoping to include many countries and he included Denmark, which was where the first summer school took place. After his death, the summer schools continued with the people like Manfred Sunsegard joining. The plan for the summer school was that it would be a self-perpetuating organization where people would learn in an atmosphere of belonging and cooperation. In the beginning, only a few countries were represented, but gradually people learned about this fantastic experience where they could learn in classes and still have a warm social atmosphere. Now we're going to the 55th summer school in 2022, and many countries are represented. In some years, we had as many as 30 countries represented. And people, once they've been there, bring friends and colleagues. People have objected to the idea that we have translations for the plenary sessions. But in the beginning, we had bilingual summer school. Some of the people in Germany didn't know English. And many of the people speaking English didn't know German. So we had the plenaries translated. And sometimes we had three translations or three languages rather. The year we were in Kios, Greece, we had three languages. We had Greece and German and English. And in one year when we were in Romania, we had Romanian as a language, under translated beautifully. So depending on the country we go to, 
we will have translations, but English and German were the basis from the beginning. And with Otis encouragement, we're continuing to do those two languages. The idea was that we bring the teachings of Adler and Dreikers and Adlerian psychology to the whole world and let people experience what it's like to be in an environment where there's social interest, social equality, feeling belonging, and encouragement. For Dreikers, that was crucial. That learning goes on in an environment which has the feel of Adlerian psychology. He wanted it to be a living experience. He wanted peace and cooperation in homes and schools and between nations. I remember one summer school when some Israelis who had strong negative feelings about Germans because of the Nazi crimes had strong negative reactions to being in Germany, but they learned to become friends with some of the German participants. And likewise, the Germans were amazed at how much they learned from the Israelis. This was very therapeutic to all participants. We've had some African-American participants who felt empathy to white people and they lost it. They were at the summer school and saw that equality and social interest could undo the troubles which racial inequality it was important to trikers that people would learn to cooperate and trust each other and work in friendships. He wanted the summer school to practice what it teaches. And he wanted it to be a living example of individual psychology as Adler and Dreikers taught. We have classes in encouragement and we have classes which emphasize the importance of social interest and social and feeling belonging. Because for Adler and Dreikers, those were the aspects of Adlerian psychology and what Adlerian psychology had to offer to the whole world. Adler and Dry were idealists and they were dreamers, but they were also men of action. And they were not afraid to take on challenges. When Dreikers went to Greece the first time and the dictator was in government, he was told to be careful not to teach democracy. And he said, Adlerian psychology always teaches democracy. And the dictator will have to accept that. Fortunately, neither Dreikers nor his staff were arrested. But the point I'm making is that Adler and Dreikers were courageous people who were willing to pursue democracy in all its aspects and to teach it and to share it in the summer school. 
I hope I've given a background that all of you can appreciate. And if I've left something out, please tell me. I'll be glad to integrate it into whatever else I would like to say. But Savina, thank you for the opportunity to talk about these concepts and about this history. And Oti, thank you for suggesting it. I appreciate all the people who have helped make the summer school so important and to bring so many countries for us to be friends with. I'm sharing with you from my home and the picture behind me is of Drikers. It was painted by a man in Uruguay who had a photo of Drikers and he made the painting on the basis of the photo. I thought you would like to see it. When he was young, he was a handsome man, but he lost his hair and he got chubby. So his daughter, me, didn't think he was such a handsome man, but many people thought he was. You can judge for yourself. He was a kind man and a generous man. He was always willing to share whatever he had. He treated people in therapy for nothing when they couldn't afford, because he said, that's part of what you do. When you're a doctor, you give your services to people who need you. And he was very generous with his time and his energy. And probably one of the reasons he died so young in his 70s, because he was never afraid of contributing and doing what was needed. He was active and willing to take chances and had a lot of troubles because of that. Many people attacked him verbally because they said his ideas were dangerous. At this point, I think all of you understand they're not dangerous if you have a democratic way of thinking. They're only dangerous if you don't have a democratic way of thinking. He was willing to help people all over. And so was Adler. Both Adler and Drikers offered their services free of charge when that was necessary. And the summer school was part of that. Drikers never made any money on the summer school, I can assure you. He contributed a lot of money to it to make it work. I hope I've given you a lot of information that is of value to you, and I thank you for letting me speak with you. Thank you. Goodbye. <clears throat>